Phage-derived at integrases employ a site-specific recombinase to insert a DNA at a single locus of the genome. In these methods, you first construct a circular plasmid DNA containing the at P sequence. That plasmid is then introduced into cells engineered with at integrases. The plasmid recombines itself into the genome. The CRIM system is one popular implementation of this biochemistry. The CRIM plasmids can be inserted into the genome using an integrase and then later excised by expression of integrase and excisase. These at P and integrase components are derived from various phages which integrate themselves into the genomes at these sites. There are at least six of these systems, many but not all are from E. coli phages. The common ones are Phi80, Lambda, HK022, P21, P22, and Phi C31. In each case, there is a specific at B sequence in the genome that undergoes recombination with the at P sequence. Different phages use different at B sequences, and each encodes its own sequence specific integrase. Most of these systems only work on DNAs up to around 10 kb. 5C31 is distinctive in that it allows the integration of DNAs larger than 10 kb. Thus, in the more advanced uses of phage at site integration, such as its use in mammalian cells, 5C31 is usually employed. The integration chemistry requires the use of helper plasmids to transiently produce the phage derived integrase. Helper plasmids are typically constructed from temperature sensitive origins of replication, and thus transformed bacteria can be cured by growth at elevated temperatures. Let me describe the different stages of the CRIM integration experiment. Let's consider that it is the Phi 80 system in E. coli. First, we start with an E. coli cell. MG1655, the granddaddy of most modern laboratory E. coli strains, contains the Phi 80 at site, so most laboratory strains are acceptable for this experiment. A helper plasmid with a beta lactamase gene is introduced into the cell by transformation and selection on ampicillin. The plasmid contains a temperature sensitive origin of replication, so the cells are grown at a permissive temperature of 30 degrees. It also encodes the Phi 80 integrase and the cells start producing the protein. The cells are then transformed again with the CRIM plasmid. This plasmid has a conditional origin of replication called R6K. In a cell that lacks the pure gene, such as ours, this origin cannot replicate. Thus this plasmid is only transiently present in the cell. It also contains an antibiotic selection marker, CMR, and the at P site. Integrase from the helper plasmid catalyzes the single crossover recombination of the CRIM plasmid into the at B site of the genome. Now that it is in the genome, it will replicate with the rest of the genome. The CMR gene confirms chloramphenicol resistance to the cell, allowing the selection of integrants on antibiotic containing medium. The cells are grown at a temperature non-permissive for replication of the helper plasmid, 42 degrees, which results in the final product which is a cell with the CRIM inserted into the genome and no other residual modification to the strain's original composition. There are various ways in which you can make this process markerless. One common strategy is to flox the selectable marker. Here a DNA is constructed with FRT sites in a parallel orientation flanking an antibiotic resistance gene. This cassette is introduced into the genome, conferring chloramphenicol resistance, allowing selection. Subsequently, flip recombinase is introduced into the cell, resulting in excision of the marker, leaving behind only the single FRT site. Let's take a look at how that would be implemented in the CRIM system. First, the helper plasmid is used to insert the CRIM into the genome with the integrase, and then that plasmid is cleared. The cell is now transformed with a second helper plasmid containing the flip recombinase. The recombinase will excise the intervening region of the DNA, leaving behind only the FRT site. The cells are grown again at 42 degrees to cure them of the helper plasmid. At the end of this process, a gene and a single FRT site are introduced into the genome of an otherwise unmodified cell containing no residual selectable markers.